Hey everybody, gardening fans. I have been working in the garden today and I just want to show you a few things I've done. So we've been doing some composting like the entire my life I've been composting. And um, I have made these plastic bins. Yes, they are plastic and I drilled holes in them. And then the bottom of them uh, you, you is the opening and the top is cut out. And then you just put all your food scraps inside there and then you can water them and there's air that can get in them because of the holes. And then when you're done, all you do is you pick up this and because the bottom is open, is bigger, all the stuff sits there, lays on the ground and then you use a shovel or a, um, a pick or whatever and you go through it and you take it and you put it into the one next to it. But what I'll do is I'll screen it. I have a wheelbarrow and then I have a large screen nothing fancy just a piece of wood with a screen on it and then I'll take it and I'll put it on top of my wheelbarrow and then you just kind of put the stuff in it and here's what you end up with this is this is amazing compost this is made up of potato peels and and bananas and apples cores and um, eggshells and maybe a little bit of newspaper or shredded these are some of its shredded bills from the <laughs> but I get spam stuff but this is some of the most amazing soil you'll ever see it's it, it has no smell to it at all look at how dry it is you just have to keep it wet it can take you know a few months to to make this much here that I have but this is from all winter I probably haven't turned these piles since maybe I don't know October November and um, everything that doesn't fit in the screen goes back into one of the piles as you can see the one on the far left is kind of bigger things you know more recent stuff you kind of want to make it wet dry wet dry and by dry I mean like leaves that are dried out or um, newspaper um, that kind of stuff and then you will put wet would be you know grass that's green plants that are green you don't want to put anything that are weeds in these compost piles because if you put weeds in the compost piles these piles are too small and they won't get hot enough to kill the weed you know and then when you put the dirt out again the compost out you'll end up having a whole bunch of um uh seed of weeds you want so you really want to keep your compost piles free of weed and no meat obviously because then you'll have animals coming into your compost piles but anyway so i have a huge uh, a nice wheelbarrow full of compost it's all really really great compost but because I don't really have anywhere to put it right now. And it's a nice little workout. I'm gonna put this plastic on it because we're supposed to have rain in a few more days. Yes, we're gonna have rain, can you believe it? We had rain, which is why my plants are all singing in happiness right now. So I'm gonna put some bricks or something on top of this wheelbarrow and make it so that the, oh, I could put the, just put the, put this back on here, the screen, so that when it rains, it doesn't, and there's a screen back on it. It's just the right size. Now, like I say, I didn't buy any of this. This is stuff. So let's look around my backyard. There's a weed that I pulled up. And you can see I have California poppies everywhere. And these are just random, you know, from, from uh, you know, they, they just over time, they just start multiplying. And it's going to be everywhere. But it's going to be, oh, I don't see any flowers on it. Maybe a few weeks, we're going to have flowers everywhere. It's This is going to be a... A floor of orange just orange everywhere and then in here I think these are narcissum and they're gonna smell beautiful I have some some these are peppers that I have probably are four years old and they'll come back these look a little kind of weird but and then in here these are yellow freesias and I really like freesias because they're amazingly they smell so amazing but I didn't plant this many. There's tons of them. And they just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. I need to take, I need to actually dig them out. I should have done that earlier. Now it's a little late to do it in the season because they're already growing. I need to dig them out and, um, you know, give them to the neighbors or put them somewhere else. I wish they were different colors because yellow is, is going to be, you know, with all the orange that's going to be here. It's going to be just yellow and orange back here. I've got some blackberries still growing. Two of them. There's some potatoes right over in here. 
I put the potatoes in a pot so that I can, once the leaves die down, then I can just, gosh, it's so sunny in here, I can't see what I'm looking at. So once the leaves die, then the plants are probably ready for harvesting. I can take these pots, dump them out, and there's gonna be a lot of little tiny potatoes inside each pot. I figured that out. I have some orange trees back here, just very small. I haven't had really great success with them. They, they're kind of bitter, so I don't know. Then this is my star jasmine, no, pink jasmine, I'm sorry. And look, this is January. This is the end of January, and it is blooming, and it smells amazing, my pink jasmine. Look at this, just incredible. So these two bushes are really ready to go. There you can see the flowers on them. And Sterling just pulled this one up so that it would grow up higher. And then I noticed that some were so long that I took and put this across to the other one. And what will happen is this is my office window. I'll be able to look out my office window and I'll have pink jasmine just blooming and smelling so beautiful right in my vision. So when I'm doing podcasting or editing or working on Wikipedia and I'm just you know, need a moment to myself. I can look out the window and I can see probably one of one of my three cats out here stretched out in the sunshine. It's just such a nice feeling. There's another orange tree. I have two block, um, blueberry bushes that are thinking about doing their thing. Again, it's January. These aren't supposed to mature until, until the summer, but because of the way the climate is, is now, um, you can see all these little pink little things right in here. I don't know how well you can see that because I can't see what I'm looking at because the sun is so bright on my screen. But these little pink flowers right here are all going to be blueberries. And they're delicious. These are such wonderful blueberries. Just amazing blueberries. And then I have planted, I had pots, flowers and pots around my trees out here. And I didn't like the way it looked. It looked too planned. So I took all the flowers out of the pots and I put them into the ground and I have went down to the department, the grocery, not grocery, the nursery, and I got a bunch of plants that were 50% off because they were in such bad shape and I planted them the other day. I think I got my, got them for like 99 cents or something like that. And um, these will be a beautiful color, the purples and the reds and the blues with the um, massive orange that's going to be out here, orange and yellow. This is a cherry tree you're looking at right here. In fact, it is three cherry trees. So these are all grafted on. So each branch is a different branch type of cherry. So we had, I've only had two or three cherries off of this tree. This is its third year, all these fruit trees. So this is the year that I should probably have lots of stuff. This is a plum. There's four different varieties of plum on this tree, each branch again. Because I don't eat a lot of fruit, and I didn't know what variety to get, so I just got multiple. I, I went invested in getting many, because I didn't want one tree with a ton of different, with one kind of fruit on it. So I thought I'd try something different. And this is going to be, this is an apricot. I've never eaten an apricot off of it. But again, it's three years old, so it should be this year. It should be its year where it's going to start to, start to give us some fruit. And then back in the back is a peach tree. And this is four different varieties of peaches. And it hasn't done so well because we've been really in a drought. And it is the farthest one from my house. So I just didn't give it as much water as it should. So it didn't do so good. It had a leaf curl this year. But uh, we had such a really good winter and it got nice and soaked. It looks like it's going to do well. It's You can kind of see the buds coming on here. I don't know how well you can see that. But you can see they're starting to to bud a little bit and we're going to have a nice peach tree and the planters I've kind of let them go rogue because I just didn't really know what to put in them I was just letting the soil sit I think I might do uh, there's some potatoes in here I don't know why I planted potatoes in something like this it's ridiculous so I'll never get all the potatoes out and there will always be potatoes coming through here but what I think I'm going to do is plant uh, tomatoes in them. I've had really great success with tomatoes over the years with the soil is so good but then it started to not do so well because I think the soil just got old and you know you you it just kind of got um, you, you need to move your plants around every so often so these have been kind of fallow just growing flowers at the at the moment and so I think I'm gonna grow 
some carrots and some tomatoes once the guard once we start getting tomatoes in the in the um, nurseries here's a rose that I used to have a lot of roses and I stopped growing roses there's so much trouble and I was traveling so much and going to school and then taking care of my mom that it was just too much so I decided to not really grow any more roses but this one has stayed with me it's called Joseph's coat and anybody who was raised in religion like I was the Christian religion knows the story of Joseph and his mini coats his mini coats his coat of many colors and that's what this is this is called Joseph's coat and I should probably cut some of these and take them in the house because they're so pretty and they have a nice fragrance again this is January in Salinas California so I'm kind of near the coast we don't get really extreme weather we get wet weather occasionally and it has been really great lately look at that look at the color isn't that beautiful such a nice nice color so this is my Joseph's coat this is called Cecile I can't pronounce it Cecile Broomer let's see if you can see it and this is a um, look at how it's going actually I have two of these um, oh here's one of my cats this is Imogen Hey, Em, what are you doing out here? Hey, you don't usually come in the backyard all that often. So, you know, each cat has their zone, and she doesn't usually come back out here. But this is a Cecile Broomer, and it's going. it grows up into my neighbor's bush, which is really high. It'll grow up in amongst it, and it'll just make it climb and climb and climb and climb, and you'll get pink, little pink blossoms in that tree. Um, yeah in the tree from the roses it'll it'll become a sea of light pink flowers it's very pretty oh look at the hummingbird up there oh, I don't know if you can see it or not but this is jasmine this is star jasmine I love jasmine I love things that smell smell good that is and this is star jasmine so this is gonna this is going to supposed to bloom in the summer but it's doing really great I've had to cut it back a little bit because it's doing so good but with the sun and the and all the um, the sun and the um, you know the water we've had, we had probably a week and a half or more of rain. It's done California happy. Um, this is a Concord grape that I planted. Oh gee, 10, 15 years ago, and in the last few years, it's done horribly because the rain again was lacking, and so we haven't had a lot of grapes. But in the past we've had amazing amounts of grapes and it'll grow up over this pergola that I have in my backyard oh it's a pretty bird hey little birdie there's another star jasmine there's another star jasmine there's my playroom with a pool table that I haven't been able to use because it's so freezing cold out there I haven't got it set up for winter wear this is a this is a chardonnay grape that is ever never ever 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 done anything so it just has some green um, some um, you know grows leaves and stuff but I don't have the heart to take it out but the Concord grapes are really sweet sweet and we'll have people come over every so often and they'll when in September when it blooms we will have a big party and everybody will get themselves sick eating Concord grapes it's just disgusting but it's fun back in the back behind my playroom here you can see there's berry bushes Never plant berry bushes into the dirt because you'll never ever get rid of them again. But I like them back there because somebody can't really jump the fence and come safely into my backyard because there's going to be they're going to be attacked with berry vines all the way around my garage. It's got these berry vines and they're very very um, you know not not uh, pleasant. They're very thorny and um, they'll grow berries but you can't get to them so you can only get to the few but they're, they're nice sweet berries so that's what's going on in my garden uh, this is a kiwi I it's a male kiwi and I've never been able to get the darn kiwi to grow anything because it's a male and nobody told me I needed a female so I bought a female twice ordered it special from the from the uh, nursery and it's supposed to pollinate it and then the female is supposed to grow the the plants I can't get the females to live so you have to have them close enough but not too close because he'll choke them out so I I just have not had good luck with kiwi but this male version is doing great and it grows really high and I can just I chop off all the leaves and I guess it makes it kind of a nice look but I really need to get a female 
and a mature female and really nurse it so that it'll stay and, and uh, you know, give me some kiwi fruit. And there's my kitty again. Imogen! Hey, say hi to everybody on Facebook. Hi, Imogen. She's got the beautiful, beautiful blue eyes. Yeah, let's see what you have to say. Aww. These cats are funny. They don't want to perform. I don't know. I think you got to look at those eyes of hers. She's all distracted because I'm out here in the backyard and it's, it's been months. She hasn't seen me back here. She, well, I have actually been back here, but she, like I said, she isn't really the type that comes out here very often. She doesn't like to be picked up much, but she's great for. So if you sit down, she wants to be on your lap. She wants to be in your face. She wants to be all over you, putting her blonde hair all over your body. That's just what Imogen likes to do. Oh, there she is. You can see her pretty blue eyes now. But um, she's just a nice kitty, huh? So anyway, I thought I'd update you on what's going on with my garden. It's January, and um, things are coming along in a few months. We'll see a lot of color back here. And it should be real interesting. I'll hopefully shoot another video and you can look back on that. But I have a few other videos on my YouTube channel if you're interested on gardening, different things I've learned. Uh, of course, I've never taken any classes on these, but we've, we've composted since I was a kid. And um, probably I've always had a compost pile going of some sort. My mom used to just dig directly into the ground and have it make a hole and then you went out and you put your stuff inside the hole and then when it got full then you put dirt over the top of it and she'd move somewhere else in the garden so she had an amazing garden um, all her life um, kind of sad that we're selling the house it's an escrow right now so that property is going to be gone but they'll be inheriting a beautiful um, a garden um, soil <laughs> um, but it's been a lot of years so I, I don't know what they've done with it in the meantime all right checking out bye